Hello, my name is Andre Louis and I'm here with Sonic Couture today to demo Sun Drums, the follow-up to Moon Kits, recorded in the same studio and with similar equipment. This is going to be fun for me, I can tell you my, sorry, rather biased opinion as I really like this product and I'll explain why as we go along. Let's jump right in. First kit I've got up is the default kit and this its layout is uh, similar to Moon Kits but a bit different. We've got uh, a GM to a point. So we've got, for example, the C, the C sharp. These are standard GM layouts, rim shot here. D and E snares, E flat, uh, louder portion. And then there's nothing on the F, G and A. Actually, there is on the A. There's nothing on the F and G where the first low toms would be. We start with the F sharp, closed hi-hat, middle for the pedal, and B flat for the open hi-hat. And then on the A and the B is the hi-hat pedal and another version of the hi-hat. You can sort of do left-handed, right-handed stuff and then we get to the toms. Now these are split in this unusual way, but you get used to them. You can actually trill with two fingers on these two toms. You've got two toms per each kit, floor tom and high tom. It's quite cool and um, a nice layout. It took me a while to understand it, but now that I have played it, I really like it. So what we have is C, D, E, F in that order. So you've got sort of left and left uh, and then right and right for the toms and then where your crash symbol would be in the GM layout, for example, on the C sharp, you actually have the edge of the floor tom, and on the E flat, where the ride would be, is the um, edge for the high tom. And then moving along, the first note we get of a symbol is this F sharp up here, which is um, crash. No, it's part of the ride, sorry. And then the G, nothing there. A flat, another part of that. Nothing on the A, and the B is the ride bell. B flat rather and then you've got a long gap because it lines up essentially it's an octave apart your two symbols are an octave apart f sharp up here it's the crash another part of the crash and the ride of the crash so in total there's a lot of good sound they focused just like moon kits on the softer side of drums not so much the hard side so although you can play these drums very hard of course and you will get a decently loud sound these are more geared towards your softer side of things. And I always often, I, I basically nearly always make the mistake I just made then of hitting the tom side stick instead of the crash. I have to remember to actually do that. Now Sonic Cho have done a fantastic job with NKS accessibility here, which is why I'm here today and I'm gonna to talk to you about that now. So there are a multitude, a multitude of complete control pages mapped for this product. Uh, more than there were moon kits, and we have more control over these as well at the moment, so it's really great. So let's talk about page one, which is the master page. So the first thing we come to is play, and when you turn that on, you get a beat, which is uh, very reminiscent to moon kits as well. Level, and a compressor, EQ, tape, limiter, bus one, and bus two. And that's page one. Page two is called kick edit. And the first thing about kick edit is the select for the kick. So we're currently on a Gretsch 24D and the D is for damp. So we can change that. This is a, a 26F kit um, and the F I actually can't remember what the F means. There, there will be notification of what all these things do mean, so don't worry. So this kit, uh, this kick now sounds like this. There's all sorts of different kicks. I can't remember how many different kit pieces um, there are per um, item, but there's a lot and it's great. I'll try not to get carried away by playing all of them to you because I want you to find some of this stuff out for yourself because it is totally worth your time. All right, so level for the kick, turning it down so you can just hear the mics now. Try and get it back to zero. There we go, 0 0.3. I'll live with that. Pan for the kick, center currently. Moving over to your left, over to your right. And that's your channel check for the day. Try and get it back to zero. I'll get there in a minute. 3L, there we go. All right, past center. Pitch for the kick. 
And this is where you can really get into some very funky customization here. So you want a high pitch kick, you can do that. All sorts of fun you can have. Like I said, I should not get carried away, but it's too easy. Attack next. So you can have a very strange sounding kick that way. I'm not sure what you'd do with it, but hey, it's there if you want it. Hold. And uh, decay. Now decay is great if you want a very short clicky kick. <laughs> and uh, all the drums have these as well, these options. And then velocity. So turning the velocity down, even when you play very soft now, you're still hearing that kick quite a bit. I'll turn it up, and now I play very soft. It's very dynamic, really cool. So that's the first page of kick stuff. Then we get onto the mics. I love this page of stuff, and every drum has these options as well. So let's see what we got. Beta for the first option for the first mic, which is now all the way down, we'll turn it up. So that's the beta for the kick. It was about minus six or so. I'll leave it about 6.8, there we go. The front is minus 10, turning it down, turning it up. It's nice ringy sound now. So if you wanted a tonal kick as opposed to an atonal kick, this is probably the mic you'd want to use for that. Really cool. Bleed is currently down totally. You can hear the snaring when you do that. Absolutely fantastic, I love that. It's quite fun if you turn down the, um, there we go. I've turned down the beta in the front, so now you've just got a bleed. Totally different sound, actually. Overhead is currently over, is minus 10, turning overhead up and down. I'll turn the bleed all the way off again, just for context. Really lovely uh, stereo spread on that overhead section. Really nice. Rear mics. That's wider than the overheads, you can really tell, and it's got a behind the, the head feel. Room mics there. Quite similar to the um, rear, but different again. Different ambience. And then we have um, a low pass filter and a high pass filter. So all the mics are now off. So let's have at least some mics. Let's have some beta uh, and some front there. We'll have a little bit of, what's that, rear mics for a bit of a different sound. Let me just turn. So we start to really be able to customize the kit in the way that you want. So we'll talk about the low pass and high pass. Um, that's low pass there, so we can turn it up. So if you wanted to get rid of that atonal sound, uh, sorry, the tonal sound I talked about before, it's at 137.5 hertz now, so your kick is no longer ringy. Not sure you would ever want that sound, but if you do, you can certainly have it. And turning down the... Uh, High pass there. Oh, sorry, I was doing the wrong way around. It was high pass I was turning up before, and then low pass. So there's your low pass going down. So in this way, you could actually, of course, automate, alter, automate, automate, there we go, automate. You could automate this stuff, because um, if it's a complete control parameter and it's automatable, then you could actually have it do that in um, during your piece. So you can do things like this. So there you go, you have your nice automation curve, you can write that into the product and so on and so forth. So we're um, past the kick stuff now, straight into the snare edit. And the snare edit is probably one of my favorites because there are so many snare types, you could be here for days going through them all. So the current snare is Canopus. And now um, Gatton Plus or Gutton Plus. I don't know, you say that a lot of this. So look, we've already got a very different kit from where we started. Very different, and you can just carry on. Let's use this for example. So why don't we use some of the parameters we learned about before and see if we can make this ring less. So we'll look at the decay for example. So it's now 250 so ms, so it's quite, quite tight. And with our kick, which is also quite a low decay,
One thing I absolutely adore about sun drums particularly is that almost every snare has a fantastic rim shot. I am one of these that collects drum libraries like wine connoisseurs collect wines, and I can tell you for a fact that I'm always hunting for a damn rim shot that I like, and I never find them. But I, <coughs> I'm not stuck with them in sun drums at all. Absolutely happy with that. So we'll move on to another snare type. This one is very fun. Um, this is a Gatton again, but this one has a ride, uh, a little splash symbol on the snare itself. I'll turn the decay back up so you can actually hear it. So you could, you could again use this for sort of um, kind of laid back. There's uses for all sorts of things in life. Again, a nice rim shot. And so the mic's um, similar, but of course different. In this case, there's no beta, for example. So the mic's is um, snare bottom, snare top. Actually, top first, bottom then, a crotch mic. I'm not sure you're allowed to say that, but it is what it is. Overheads, 10.5 dB currently. Turning that up. Rear mic. Lovely room ambience, I really like that. A room mic. Filter again, high pass and low pass, and I got them wrong the other way. So high pass is first. So now it sounds like someone's sort of crashing around on a bus. And we turn the low pass down there. Turn that back down. So the, 30, the, the um, high pass goes all the way from 36.1 hertz and the low pass all up to 21.8k so it's quite a nice range on all of that and then we get into hats and just like the snares and the kicks there's a multitude of choices for the hi-hats and i like that very much so this is a zildjian 14 inch um there is a 13 inch there the 10 inch it's very tiny Actually, this goes along with my sort of tiny kit sound. So why don't we, for example, pitch this up a little bit? Because the controls uh, for the edits are consistent across all the pages, but the mics do change, of course. So I tell you, let me go back to the uh, snare page and, for example, turn the decay down and the hold down. Because what we'll do is make a, a buzz, a bizarre sort of, um, I don't know, it's not quite DMB. could do all sorts of stuff with that, right? But I think my hat decay is still too much. There we go. <laughs> much, much fun. All right, so let's move on to the mics. Let me set the decay back so you can hear what I'm gonna do. Hat mics and filter. So close, first of all. Very, very well mic'd, I love that. I wish I know what mics they were. Beautiful. Crotch mic again. Very, very mic. Uh, nice because it's mono and just very, very there and present. If you were doing some kind of old, old school type stuff, you could do a lot with a sound like that. Overhead. That is a glorious image. Oh my goodness. Mix that with a close. Yeah, I'm, that's why I'm in love with this library already. Just so much mic options. Just so good. Rear mics. All right, turn down those. Room mics. Oh, it's so far away. It sounds like it's actually next door. Very cool. Let's look at the tom now. Um, it goes tom and then the floor, but we'll look at the tom first. So the first page of tom, of course, is the choice of tom, which is currently Hey 12. Ludwig 13, Heyman 12. Okay, thanks. And there are two keys, actually three keys per tom. Very fun stuff with that. 13T, which is not damped. Yeah, T is T-Tel. T-Tel, ah, oh, I love T-Tel kits. I think they're great. 
James is in the corner like my producer giving me information, which is really good because sometimes I just don't know what I'm talking about. But that's okay. Tea towels and then WFL 13. Really good sound there. Um, the WFL snare, which I'll talk about later, is gorgeous and my favourite. All right. I think we're at the end of those. Let's go all the way back. Gretsch, Gretsch 13. And then level again, of course. Pan, pitch, attack, hold and decay, and the velocity. Now, the velocity again is interesting because you can turn it all the way down and play softly. You can really hear those amazing low velocities they've recorded here. And hitting it hard, you can, you know, it changes pitch as a tom does. You can really feel that. And if we turn the velocity up again, now it's 100. You can really dig in into that sound. All right, let's turn it down to, there we go, 40.4%. This is enough to demonstrate. Now we'll go to the mics because Tom mics, you know, you've got to have that. So the first one is the close mic, which is now all the way down. The crotch mic. There's a lovely ring on that, which I actually quite like. It gives a sense of realism. I think sometimes a lot of libraries do this thing where you have so much cleanliness that there's no realism left overheads. That's really close to the overheads. Um, I'd be scared that the drummer might hit those mics if it's any closer than that. Rear mics. Love that image, I really do. Room mics, currently minus 14. Nice and far away, and it's a different image to the hi-hat, so you can sort of tell. There's a lot of nice ambience there. And then, of course, the high pass and low pass again. So let's take it up. You can use a lot of this for some really great sound design choices as well, which is always a good thing. And there's the, uh, there we go, low pass there. So I better set this back to something kind of meaningful because it won't be usable otherwise. And let's go to the floor edit. So it's currently on Grec 16, Grec 16 start there. Hey, 14, there we go. Ludwig, 16. I love that, that's very nice. And interestingly, the uh, there's a C key for the floor tom and an E key, and the E key sounds quite different than the C key. I'm not sure why that is, but I do like that sound. Level again, pan, pitch, attack, hold, decay, and velocity. And let's look how these low velocities sound, because I'm quite curious. Again, soft is barely touching that. What about the E key? It almost sounds like a different drum, doesn't it? You can tell it's related. But it does sound like a wholly different drum. I really enjoy that. Turning the velocity back up. 88% right now. And there's just so much room to, for the kit to breathe, which is always a good thing. All right, close mic, currently minus 3.2 dB. All the way down now. The crotch mic. There's a wholly different sound than the other one, wholly different. Overheads. Man, you could, you could build a kit just from overheads. It would sound fantastic. The way that these are mic'd up, literally fantastic. Rear mics. Room mics. And then high pass, low pass. So what we got? It begins to sound like um, bad headphones on a train if you have the high pass up a lot, doesn't it? down there. And I kind of like that sound because it sounds like your next door neighbour playing drums really badly. And after that we have the ride edit. Now let's see if I get the right one. Currently he's in 22. All right let's turn it all the way to the left and go all the way from the beginning. So that's the F sharp. 
beautiful sound. The A flat here. The B flat here with a bell. And there are, again, a lot of kits that I come across in my daily travels have really kind of average or below average ride bells. Not so for sun drums. Zildjian 22A. I'm not sure what the A and B actually specify. All right. Next. What I have to do is play it and then turn it. And then I know that it's changed when it actually changes the sound. There we go. Zildjian 22B. Just lovely. 24. This has neither A or B, it just is. Look at that ride. So nice. All right, I think we've come to the end of that. And of course, level. And of course, one thing we didn't do with a lot of the other drums is play with the pitch, but when you change the pitch of cymbals, you can have way too much fun. So you can turn your, your uh, ride into a crash there. A long crash, admittedly, but if you change it to decay, then you could have it real. So I'm now down at 5.1, minus 5.1, which is rather nice. It's big and fat, isn't it? I've gone back to the Zildjian 22A now. All right, so let's put the pitch somewhere normal. All right, minus 0.22 is close enough for me. All right, ride my there, sorry. Close. And without the close, it's just an immediately huge, wide, really nice sound. The crotch mic. Overheads here. And the nice thing is I'm turning the overheads up and of course I'm not hitting it very hard because I don't want to blow your faces off. But if I turn it up and play it really, really softly, it's just really, really nice. Actually, I'm going to turn the velocity to 100% so that I can actually turn up the overhead really, really softly. Because the, the overhead is currently 8.2 dB. Now, you wouldn't want me to hit that hard because it would hurt you very much, but the reason I did that is actually to see how much you could really dig into the sound, and I do really appreciate that. And if you hit the bell hard enough, you get a bit of the kind of ride uh, crash sound as well, which is really cool. Rear mic's here now. That is a wonderful image, just really nice. And room is currently minus 14. It's huge, isn't it? Just huge. And then of course, low pass, high pass, high pass first. When you get to sort of 17.7 kilohertz like that, it doesn't sound like a cymbal anymore and your bell is practically dead at this point. Bring it back down. And let's take the top end off. It's a wholly different sound. Of course, cymbals being in the high register anyway, you would expect that, but it's just really interesting. And there's a drive uh, feature here too. And now crash edit. So let's start all the way to the left. Zildjian 16 here. I've heard that before. And what I mean is I've heard it like on a kit before. It's nice when you hear something that's well recorded and you go, oh yeah, I know that sound. Vintage 19. I think that's vintage anyway. Great. Zildjian 19. The thing is, again, if you turn the velocity all the way up as opposed to down, then you can probably roll on the key. So that's doable. It's currently 65, but if I turn it all the way up... You'd probably want to automate it to make it sound more real, but you certainly can, and that's really nice. Turning again. Zildjian 20. It's funny how different they are, the 19 and the 20. Very different sounds. Right, then we go. So the usual stuff is on the first page. We'll do the mics because I like doing the mics. 
Close mic, of course. Their crotch mic. <laughs> Overheads here. That is very close to the mic, and I feel like if I hit that cymbal hard, then it probably whizzle around a bit. So you can actually hear it swing slightly. I think that's great. You can tell it's been hit really hard on that stand. And that's another thing. Sometimes libraries just miss out on these fundamental things that bring your, your library realism. And I really appreciate things like that myself. There's the rear mics. Turn that down. And here's the room mics. So since the room is quite right heavy, and if I turn the overheads up, then you have quite a, a spread crash sound here. It's not quite balanced, but the fact is you can do it, and I think that's rather nice.